Right guys, Mark Crossfield here, La Cala Golf Club in Spain with Matt on camera. Hello. Uh, a subject close to Matt's heart, we're going to talk pressure today. How to deal with pressure on the golf oh, course. thank goodness. There's always pressure on the golf course. Obviously you could be playing really well, trying to shoot your handicap. You could be playing really bad and wanting to just like maintain some level of self-respect and wanting to come back. So how you manage the situations that we're often in on the golf course is crucial for you having more fun. Let's talk about some ways that you could try and manage it and maybe even just accept that these pressures are here. First point then, Matthew, pre-shot routine. So this is our first tee shot and it's gonna be a tough one today because it's really slopey and it kind of disappears off to the left. I wanna go for a routine where I get myself comfy that I know what I'm trying to achieve in my movement. I also wanna go through a routine where I'm, as I'm doing it, I'm visualizing shots which we'll come to. So my pre-shot routine is really getting me kind of mentally prepared to know as best as I can with the variable walk come out is gonna happen and it's gonna be the same on this first first tee as it will hopefully to the 50s, the 17th, the 18th. Yeah. Don't take extra practice things on the first, you should be doing that in the net or on the practice ground. Don't let the pressure of the first tee stop the kind of system that you're using to get the best out. So good pre-shot routine, whatever that is. So I've done my pre-shot routine, I'm stepping in and I'm trusting everything that went before and now the variable that comes out, I'm just going to go with it. Good shot. Yeah, I'll take that. Got away with that. It was a toe. I was expecting toe it to really dip and it didn't. So yeah, thank, shot. thank you, Cleveland, for that. Pre-shot routine can also start when you put your bag down and things as well, can't it? Yeah, that's a really like, good point. When I used to carry and stuff as I was an amateur, like my bag always went to the right. Yeah. I'd always then grab my rangefinder, get the yardage, put that back, pick my club or look at winds and stuff first, pick my club, then go two practice swings, think about the shot, what I want to do, and then I'm into my shot. Yeah, and the other thing I used to do, which I liked on a pre-shot routine idea, was I used to, um, I would like to watch the first two tee shots. So if, if I was going to the first, yeah. the two groups in front of me, at least I want to watch them go. So yeah. I would make sure I get to the first tee 20 minutes early. Yeah. Because sometimes you hit shots and like there's, there's wind that you know, but it gets above the tree and the yeah. ball really goes. And I start, yeah. oh, look, that's moving yeah, yeah. more than he thought and I thought. Bouncing off I'm there. aiming now a bit further up, so yeah. I would learn from them. Yeah. Great shot. That's like 40 past you. Totally. <laughs> so the next point, and you are about 40 past me, picking targets. So this is a great situation. If you show the green, you see how obviously it drops off on the left. That pin is on the left. The pin is back left. And the green slopes right to left. Yeah. And there's a kick in from the right. Yeah. And the ball is on an uphill slope and above my feet. And I can overdraw short irons at the moment. So I'm going to work that variable in as well. Yeah. So that's where my target picking is coming in from to try and release, relieve, calm down pressure. So if I'm one down, one to go, I would argue my target isn't from a wedge is not going to change that much for it would from if I was two down or two up with two to go. Okay. Uh, my, I tend to find I've picked very consistent targets because I'm trying to hit this wedge within its normal range. I'm not, as soon as you start to push, the variable is bigger and now I've got more chance of failure. Now, having a clear target and all this awareness doesn't mean I don't miss on the low side. I could easily miss this on the low side, but I am not just going to look at that flag and go for it. That's how pressure becomes, like that's such a pressure filled shot. Yeah. Trying to hit that target straight on. Yeah. So I'm just never going to choose. Yeah. And what I think is interesting is people who struggle with pressure more, you often ask them about targets, they're picking high level targets. Yeah, high, low percentage. Yeah, as you think, shot. no wonder you're cacking it on every <laughs> shot. Like I see it as out towards those trees of a bit of draw. If I pull it, I'm a hero. Mm -hmm. um, and if I don't, there's a good chance it'll kick in from there and I'll be better than I deserve to be. A little skinny, but it's all good. It's so out the to green. the right. So the strike has let me down. And again, this is the point of having low pressure targets. That's a pretty rank shot with a wedge. That the pin is not making that carry and coming up short. Uh -huh. 
So I've got the press, pressures coming from the variance of shots you hit. That's one of my high variance of shots. So that's one of my worst wedge strikes. Yeah. But I think that made it onto the green. I think that's probably middle of the green. Yeah. 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 Relieve that pressure, pick sensible, sensible targets and keep to them. Good effort, oh. pick it up. So for me, the biggest pressure filler has always been per, on a personal level. And I think it's the same for most golfers, even if they're not sure how to ar articulate it. So basically pressure is a little bit of the fear of the unknown. So I remember reading a psychology book on it once years ago when I was a kid and it was a, you know, his example I think was like on a four foot putt if you just say to yourself this either goes in or it misses it relieves some pressure because the unknown has now disappeared mm -hmm. you stand over it going i don't know if it's going to go in or miss it's that i don't know but if you just say to yourself this either goes in or it misses yeah it's fact it's like that's <laughs> all it's not i don't know what's going to happen it's that you make it you know what's going to happen is so obvious yeah so if you think about it in relationship to this shot so if i've hit enough wedge shots i've got a wedge in my hand and i can predict with some regularity what shape shot I'm going to hit here yeah. relating to picking targets. It allows me to feel less pressure. If I stand on this tee and I don't know what's coming out, I'm going to fat it, fin it, block it, pull it. That's when I'm going to feel really nervous and anxious. So the thing is, lots of people watching this might think, well, that's just obvious because obviously that's what we know that's what makes us feel more so comfortable. But what I then see is that the better players tend to work really hard on every loft club they have to work out some patterns. So they work yeah. out their percentage. So for instance, I've probably got an 80% chance of hitting a little draw with this wedge. It might not come out as a 20% chance, it won't. But I'm going to play that 80% chance. And that's gone straight to a little yard draw at the most to the left. And if I kept, I don't know if that's yeah. long enough or uh, not. Yeah, yeah, that's just past the pin, that's all good. So if I just keep hitting that shot again and again and again, I'm now gonna try and aim a bit more at the right. You know for a fact, if you wanted to feel less pressure, so you kind of don't, you're yeah. here for the fun. If you wanted to feel less pressure, you would work harder on knowing what's coming out of each club. Absolutely, and I also think though that better players are better at working out as they're going as well. They don't even have to go and hit 100 balls at the range. Like, I'm working it out as we play four days in a row. Like, by the ninth hole, I kind of know what my pattern is and I know what my feel is and I know what might come out. So that pressure's starting to disappear. Yeah. Um, and I think that's what better players are also good at. Yeah, I agree. And at the end of the day, if the variable is just too high in what you bring to the table, then there is your answer. There's where you need to practice, there where you need to f uh, focus your time. If you can't do that, mm -hmm. we have some other ideas for you. So let's think about expectations. That's a big killer in the old nerve jangle area, is it not? Yeah, definitely. If we call your putt about eight foot, yeah. in the comments down below, What's the make rate on an about eight foot putt on the PJ Tour, playing on some of the best surfaces, some of the best putters, golfers in the world? In the comments, from around eight foot, what's the make rate about on the PJ Tour? Mm. Matt, do you know what it is? Uh, it's around 50%. I standard. think it's around 50%. So basically this putt, you're making half of them if you're very good. If you're very good, world's best, best greens. And we've hit wedges into this green. Yeah. So how many approach shots are we hitting within that distance? I'm not in many. Like that's a good approach. I was yeah. happy with mine and I'm, yeah. well, 20 20 foot. Fit, yeah. So I think pressure is often coming for golfers so much on false expectations. And you can relate that back to what we were saying on the tee. So if I'm hitting a draw 80% of the time with my wedge, 
it's it's that expectation is realistic based on me hitting lots of wedges if that expectation is not correct or it needs lowering but you keep it up high you're going to feel so much pressure you're going to feel so much disappointment which will lead to more pressure when i look at golf i don't see an eight foot putt any different to a first tee shot or an 18th tee shot or a 16th tee shot or a narrow tee shot yeah they've got percentages i have some idea of where they are when i play better i'm pretty close to knowing where they are when i play bad i obviously my expectations are completely wrong yeah yeah. And then I feel more pressure, then I feel more upset. Because um, I guess it can work in an opposite way as well, can't it? Because as I get closer, this percentage is going to go up, puts maybe more pressure on you if you feel like you shouldn't miss. Yeah, but that's Does if you that look make, at what, that's very true, but that's sense? if you look one shot at a time. Yeah. You've got to be patient. You've got to know that it's 50% of the time. That doesn't mean if I put 10 balls down there, you hold five right. of them. Yeah. You might hold one or two, mm. but on another sitting, you'll allow eight or nine, Yeah. but you're going to have to hit 500 sittings of tens for that to play through and that's the beauty of golf and i see it yeah. in lessons i see it in club fits and that's where the expectation is unrealistic yeah it's how you read that idea i know i hit 20 percent 80 percent draws little draws at the moment with that wedge but i know i could hit four over pulls or pushes in a row but do i change on that day well possibly or do i just commit to my data that i know will play through in the long run well with a wedge i'm just gonna keep it's gonna come back that wedge is, <laughs> yeah. it's gonna start drawing 50 50 in the comments down below in or not rubbish that's a hundred percent missed i'm so bad at putting <laughs> so the last point and this is something you'll need to work on because i don't think it's something that naturally comes to lots of golfers is having really strong visuals before you hit your shot so actually visually picturing the shot in your mind it sounds like such a cliche understanding where you know, if I hit this drive how I want, it's going to go, if you show the fairway up here, it's going to go out towards the right and just draw towards those bunkers. And I feel I'm going to take it quite close to them. Like I've got a real strong... You're very pinpoint as well, yeah, aren't you? Yeah, and it's like a putt. Like I see it as clearly as I would see a putt if yeah. I was putting well. Yeah. And I relate clear visuals to my chipping, which has been wobbly and still can be. I have a little bit more visual now, but at the height of me worrying about how I was going to strike it, feeling pressure, the strong visuals of the shot just was disappeared and I, have to, I had to work on trying to bring them back. Yeah. Because my strong visual was so focused on this, like is it that or what's happening, that I would then chip and look up and think, oh, that's just not even on the right line. Uh, yeah, weight's wrong. Everything. Yeah, and oh, I've yeah. hit that generally too short. Struck it good, but it's 10 feet short, totally. whatever. So, yeah. and it made me realize, and it does as I work with more and more students, just if you lose those strong visuals, the pressure is just so increased. It's like the intent, the intensity of inwardness mm -hmm. far outweighs what you need to be focusing on more of almost like a target band. So these are things you should be working on. And you can work on these at the range. I like, when I used to go to the range, I would aim towards boundaries of the range and try not to hit them. Like put that added little focus on direct visuals of not hitting that fence or that bunker or that tree line, those yeah, kind of yeah. things. So it, there are things you can practice. And I think often I'm posting the comments below, do you practice them, yes or no? I think lots of people don't. And the easiest thing to not practice them is because you don't feel like you can pull them off. Yeah. But then I see that as a as a, a never-ending circle of doom. You've got to prepare for decent shots, be aware of bad ones a little bit. So I can visualize this shot. If I can pull it off or not, I don't know, but I'm very clear going in what I'm gonna do or try and achieve. And I think that also allows me to know then if I've achieved it or not, if that makes sense. Yeah. So I slightly mishit it so I didn't get the draw, but it started exactly where I wanted it to start. That clear visual allows me to assess, move on, and just relieve a little bit of pressure. Let me know if any of these tips help in the comments down below. I know Matt will be re-watching this video over and over again because you're a little nervy, aren't you? Hey, more at the start, more at the start. <laughs> and if you've got any tips that have helped you with pressure, 
even like you know i used to it sounds really bad but i used to be able to give up yeah so i was quite good in tournament if i didn't give up that it was just got too much for me emotionally and it would upset me so i was able to just let go okay i'm not making the cut i'm not winning this tournament so i'm just gonna really relax and not really care about any shot and often it would settle me down a little bit if you've got some great tips let us know down there as always but hopefully some of these might help you enjoy your golf a little bit more